Hey Google, what's the meaning of all fur coat and no knickers? The all fur coat and no knickers is used in British as an informal term to mean have an impressive or sophisticated appearance which belies the fact that there is nothing to substantiate it, as in, the government's policies are all fur coat and no knickers. On that note, let's roll the B-roll. So today we're going to take a look at this, the Shuey Glamster. Um, as you all know, I ride with the X0 and I ride that all the time. Um, I decided to splash out and treat myself and go for a full face option just to keep me uh, a little bit drier and warmer in the winter months. And um, all the reviews that I looked at online were all positive. The only negatives that I could find were people complaining about the name Glamster. Um, so I thought, well, what's not to like? It's a lovely looking helmet. Um, it's part of that retro classic range, uh, aimed squarely at the cafe racer rider market. Um, it's the full face option, so it's gonna keep me warmer and drier in those colder days. It's made by Shuey, so it's got a reputable background. And I thought, what's not to like? Okay, so in terms of visibility, you've got a nice big opening here. Uh, it really is a nice big open wide field of vision. It's great for those lifesaver checks. You really sort of have got a wide field and you don't feel like you're restricted in any way. Um, and it does come with a pin lock insert and I'm gonna go into the pin lock insert in more detail a little bit later on, but let's just stick with the visor at this point. So the other point to note about the visor is it's got this little catch here you push it to one side, which bends it. It, do, it doesn't actually move a little thing. You, you push the clip clamp to one side and then you push the visor up. Um, so the lens bends, if you like, and you push it up. The lens opens in two positions and I'll show you this close up. You sort of lock it in an up position and then it's not on a ratchet system. It sort of locks in a down position and then you clamp it shut like this. So it's in two positions. It's sort of completely shut or completely open, like that. It comes with a little bottle of um, silicon droplets and you can put the silicon droplets within these screws to help it sort of go up and down. Um, and you're also advised to put a very fine layer of silicone around this rubber and it just helps it to seal down completely. So when you're inside that, you are like locked in. So when you buy your Glamster, it comes with a free pin lock insert. Um, and that is to stop your shield fogging up. I mean, we've all ridden on cold days, rainy days, and you know, it's, it's annoying when you're sat at the lights and you're sort of holding your breath because you're steaming up inside or you've got it slightly open, you know? So, the pin lock is there to get rid of the fog, you know, no, no more steaming up at the traffic lights. I installed the pin lock on this um, and the first thing I noticed was my own reflection coming back at me right in the field of vision. So you can see your own nose and eyes at the level that you're riding at and you sort of have to look through your own reflection and your own reflection is made worse based on the light conditions. If the sun comes out or if it's getting a bit dark and you've got lights from cars, it's problematic. It's annoying actually. And I'll just highlight some points that you actually get pointed out to you within the pin lock uh, guide. Uh, point number four, um, it says here, daytime use only. Never use the pin lock Evo lens at night. If the Pinlock Evo lens is used with a clear shield, its light transmission ratio will be approximately 80%. The value does not meet the light transmission standards in the US or Europe. So this accessory for is for daytime use only in these jurisdictions. I bought this helmet predominantly to ride during the colder months because I love my X0 and I wear that in the summer and as much as I can. And this Glamster was designed for me to wear when it gets a little bit colder. So it gets dark November, December, three, four o'clock, you know. So if I go off to work, I'm not going to be taking the Evo pinlock lens 
in and out every time I want to ride because it obviously is a highly sensitive as well. It's prone to scratching. The silicone sealant around it, you know, um, has only got a limited sort of life shelf life as well. So taking it in and out all the time is not a really a feasible option. But Shuey give you this Evo lens, this pin lock lens, because they have to. And that is because of the next point, which is ventilation. So ventilation, we've got these shark sort of fins over here on the front on the chin guard and then we've got this open and closable vent on the top to allow air to come into the skull region and for the air to be exhausted via these ports at the back of the head here. Now in terms of the actual ventilation working this is what I found. Obviously these vents at the front um, they don't go all the way through into here, so it's not like they just blow in and blow all the way out. You have got some little recesses just here, and I don't know whether that's to put something in, you know, like you get that nose thing, or whether that's actually allowing some of the air to sort of circulate via these ports up the top, because it doesn't go all the way through inside the helmet, inside the chin guard, it's, it's sealed there. In terms of this top guard, again, I couldn't really feel any difference. Whether this was open or closed, you can't feel any difference to the circulation on the top of the head or around the head. Um, the other thing is it's quite difficult to uh, manoeuvre with a gloved hand. This edge is raised. And when you're riding along, you don't know what bit you're pushing. You're sort of pushing that, and then you're pushing up that, and then you're pushing that, and you're like, well, why ain't it working? And you're trying to look at what you're doing as you're riding, which isn't great. Um, yes, without a gloved hand and with looking at the helmet, it's simple to operate. It's really smooth. But riding, it's difficult. Getting back to the actual ventilation itself, like I said, you can't tell whether this is open or closed. It doesn't make a difference. You can't feel anything coming through from the front here. When you're breathing, you can actually feel your breath within the helmet, which is nice when it's a cold day because it's keeping you a little bit warmer. Um, and obviously this is locked down in the locked position, but it's not actually circulating. The only way that I felt the air circulating at certain points was if I turned my head. So if I was doing checks and I was turning my actual head in different, like left and right, um, I could feel some air sort of blowing up around my eyes around here. If I tipped my head forward, I could feel more air up around here, blowing around the back of the head and going up here a little bit, sort of almost like it was like a chimney, like sucking the air out, you know. Um, but I couldn't actually feel it by operating this or just by air coming in here alone. So just going back to the visor quickly in terms of ventilation, and the visor is a sort of combined uh, thing. And that is obviously because ventilation is not its strong point and because you can feel your breath inside there, um, if you didn't wear the pin lock and you wanted to remove the pin lock, you are gonna seriously steam up because it is gonna get very foggy in there very quickly. You've either got it completely locked or you've got it in the upright position. Um, and I'm just gonna play, play you a clip when I ride, if I'm filtering and I'm about to go to through the traffic to the front of the queue, I like to lift the visor up um, just to sort of give me an open field of vision, you know, no distractions or obstructions. That's just my thing. I like to open the visor. And what I found was it started screaming. It was squealing. And I actually thought that my brake caliper was seized because it was sort of squealing. But what I found was it's actually this, the way it catches the wind, um, if you're riding along at sort of slowish speeds, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles an hour, you're going to get a, a squeal come from that. Again, the helmet only operates in two positions. That is completely up or completely down. Um, it's not a, on a ratchet system, so you can't uh, ride along maybe like this. It's just going to flip down. So let's talk comfort and fit. 
In terms of the comfort, you've got that removable headlining like you've got in the X0, um, which is great because you can keep that nice and clean, especially if you wear products in your hair, you know, it allows you to take it in and out as you like to keep it clean and wash it. The other option is you can buy replacement cheek and sort of headliner parts. And I think the cheek parts are about 30 quid and the headliner is probably about closer to 40 quid. So a little bit on the expensive side, but it's an option if you needed to replace the liner, it's always there. Um, around the ears, you've got the same thing as the X0, which is what I really liked, which was it doesn't compress around the ears. You've got a nice opening here and that allows space for comms if you want to put some comms in. And also, if you wanted to throw a pair of sunglasses on, you've got the space to do that, and it's not going to restrict or dig into the head. It's actually going to give you enough space for those glasses to sit comfortably. However, you have got the problem of the air circulation within the helmet, and I would think on a cold day, they're going to they're gonna fog up. Unless you've got that visor all the way open and it's screaming as you're going along, um, those glasses are going to get fogged up if you've got that visor in the closed position. So things I like about the helmet. Well, it's obviously shoey, which means it's a reputable brand. It's got the, uh, the composite shell technology behind it, which is a rider. You know, it's nice to know that you've got that safety behind you. It's got a removable lining, which again, you know, as a consumer, it helps you keep that helmet in tip top condition. You can take that lining in and out, keep it nice and fresh or remove it if you needed to. In terms of the styling, it's got that 1950s retro sort of bad B-movie spaceman look about it. And if you ride a cafe racer, bobber, street scrambler, you know, that type of modern classic, it's really gonna suit your look. So it's great in terms of all of those features. Here's what I don't like about the helmet. The pin lock and the reflection that you get from the pin lock. Um, it's really annoying. I'm sure it, maybe if you ride over time, you know, you're gonna get past looking at your own reflection and you're gonna be able to see through that. But being that it's in the terms and conditions of use that you should need to remove it at night, it's not practical. People will say, well, just remove the pin lock if you don't like it, you know, take it out. Wear, wear the helmet without the pin lock if that's your problem. Well, the problem is the ventilation. And I think that is why Shui invest and give you a pin lock as part of the deal. Because without it, I think they'd see returns go through the roof because the ventilation and the airflow is not sufficient enough, um, you are gonna be fogged up in seconds if you're riding on cold days and that is in a down position, you're just gonna be fogged up. You would have to ride it with the pin lock with, to, to not suffer from a condensation with inside the helmet. So, and that is the other thing I don't like, it's impractical to assume that the rider is gonna be able to remove the pin lock every time they ride as soon as the light starts to dim. The visor, again, only has those two uh, usable positions which are completely closed in the down position or all the way up. Um, it doesn't ratchet and sort of work in a halfway between. And then if you do flip it up and ride it in an all the way open position, it's gonna scream like a banshee, you know. I thought, like I said, my brakes were seized because it was squealing, but um, yeah, so they're the two options that you got, shut or open. The other part that I don't really like is the, the ventilation. Not that you can really tell that it's making much of a difference, but that ventilation on the top of the helmet is really difficult to work with a gloved hand. You can't really feel where it starts or finishes. Once you get your hand on it and you think, oh, there it is, it's easy. But finding it randomly when you're riding, is not an easy task, you know, and you can be finding yourself fiddling around. But like I said, you can't really tell the difference whether it's opened or closed anyway. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts? Well, when I was doing my research, a bit like probably what you're doing now and looking to buy the Glamster, the only negative that I could find was people saying that they thought the name was a bit of a problem, you know, all laughing about this name, the Glamster. I think if you're gonna buy the Glamster, it's the least of your problems. You know, you've got all of them other things that I've pointed out, which are potential issues. Yes, it is a lovely helmet, but is it worth 350 quid? Um, to, to me, to be honest, I feel a little bit disappointed. Yes, it's got the shoey fit. Yes, it is nice and light and all of those things. But there are so many little drawbacks and niggly things for 350 quid. I feel a little bit let down as a consumer. But, you know, this is down to you. This is obviously part of your homework that you're doing for yourself to see whether or not the Glamster's for you. Um, so I hope you found this review helpful in some way. Uh, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more videos coming up. Don't forget to check out the Let Us Live website. 
we've got a, a link in the description and there's a small discount there if you put in Tony Reviews as you go to the checkout. Safe riding and I'll see you all soon. Ooh. Hey Google, do you like me new fur coat? On the website en.wiktionary.org, they say, all fur coat and no knickers, having a superficially positive appearance that is belied by the reality, e.g. superficially elegant and beautiful but actually common.